Hi, welcome to Base Editing with Daisy. Today we're going to learn a bit more about the Base Editor. It's got some quirks, it's got some bugs, and it's got some little idiosyncrasies that I want to show you a little bit more about so you can deal with them better. Okay, so the first problem I wanted to talk about was something we call base shift, and that is when you've been editing and you leave the base for at least six minutes and you come back and things have moved around. Um, what's going on is there is a rounding error. When you place an object, the base is using text fields and then it has to round that value to a number it can use. And when it rounds, the position of your item changes slightly. It's much easier to see this in um, smaller items. Um, like alphabet letters, things, small things you're laying close together and you want them next next to each other and you come back and some are really close and some are farther away and it's just annoying. So basically what you do is um, you can reposition and sometimes if you reposition it slightly you get a different error and the item is okay. Like I didn't really have to mess with my batons here at all because they stayed the position I put them in. but. For the lines of the stall panels, uh, the cables that I originally used disappeared into the inside of the fridge and I had to use something bigger. I use something bigger because it doesn't seem to, shift doesn't seem to affect it as much. And especially for stall panels, I put them in horizontally and then see if they shift where they're, they come out a bit more or they disappear back in to see which way the shift is going. And um, if they are out maybe just a little bit more than they were before, um, what I will do is angle and just, I'll change the angle to something really small, and then I'll just angle it, and you see it gets thicker and thinner. And uh, so I'll take the position the editor gave me, and I'll make it the thickness that I want, and then I'll move the piece to where I wanted it to be with that same thickness showing. And that has worked really well. So two item, two ways that you can deal with shift. One is reposition and hope that the editor rounds correctly to the position you want it to. And the second is just um, angling it a little bit to make it go to where you want it to be. Um, there's a little bit of a trick to that. So it just, I mean, like with this item, if two items are close in surface to each other, um, the base editor may make them basically on the same plane, in which case one might flicker or they might, one might disappear, like this little computer might disappear into my stove. So I might just um, angle that, change the angle on that a little bit so that I can see it better. Uh, or you know, change the position a little bit so that it comes up with a different error. So I just you know mess with it and hopefully, and if you use a grid, sometimes it's a little easier too. Sometimes it won't give you so many rounding errors. But so the other annoying base error is when you're trying to grab a particular object, and um, like I'm clicking on. I'm trying to click on the uh, stove and it wants me to go to the wall sconce and if I try to grab the stove right now, nope, I would get the wall sconce. So um, sometimes you're, you're going for a particular object and you try and it gives you a different object. So um, what you just do there is when you're trying to grab an object, it's usually with the smaller objects, just uh, hold down the mouse button for a second before you try to move it and that will help the computer to register, oh yeah, that person is moving that object instead of the one I want it to. So it'll just help the computer know which object you're actually trying to grab. Um, something else the editor does sometimes is send you across the base. It can be very annoying, especially if you're working above or below, because it'll send you to the base, which is usually a long way away. Uh, that's not you, it's the editor. Don't know why it does that, it just does. Another quirk with a base editor is that flicker. Sometimes you just get these things and they're just two objects trying to occupy the same space and it's annoying and it doesn't go away unless you do something about it. So, I mean, if you can, of course, it's nice to be able to move these things so that they are side by side 
and then you don't have the flicker. Um, you have to make sure you get them close enough so you don't see what behind them but if you have it on the grid setting you can do that but if you do have it on the grid side setting and you have to overlap um, it's nearly impossible if you, you have it on the grid setting when you try and move these apart they'll move way far apart and it won't look like it's all part of the same thing and, and I'm sure you want it to look like it's part of the same thing so maybe try moving it just a little bit off and then it doesn't look too bad but a lot of times when I try this, I come back and the editor has smacked them right back together. And again, we have the flicker. So what do you do when you've tried to correct and it's not working? Well, what I've done with this other one is angled it very slightly side to side. And you see it's very close to the other one. The box for this item goes right over the other wall. And when I set it, there's just no flicker whatsoever because it's enough off, not enough that you can really tell, but it's enough off that the computer knows, oh, those aren't occupying the same space and there's no flicker. So that's a way that you can deal with flicker. Now something I wanted to mention just about bases in general is there's a 20,000 item limit to your memory and uh, that's definitely a you know hard cap but your FX like your tech effects and your arcane effects and so, and your water effects and things like that those may be just one item but they use a lot more memory and your memory for your base is really important because the more items you have and your base item storage counts into that number uh, every time you go into your base storage and take something out or put something in you're changing your entire base. The, the program rewrites the entire base. So when you have a base that has a very large memory um, tag to it, it's very high memory base, then you run into possible uh, errors where you might lose salvage or lose enhancements or even if you're doing a uh, respec in the base you might lose your enhancements from your respec. Basically it's just a lot of problems that you might get because you're using a lot of memory and the program is having some difficulty with that. So for the safest bases use fewer items and try and do cool things with less. So that's just a pro tip. Um, okay so another thing I wanted to point out a little quirk is just item placement. Now, when you position an item, if it's positioned on the floor, uh, whenever you move it, even if your mouse goes over other things, it's going to stay exactly the same position. Even if you were to tilt that item in a particular way, when you move it around or you lift it up or whatever you're doing with it, um, it's going to do, it's going to stay exactly how you put it. But when something is attached, when you make the attachment surface, the surface of where it, what it's over determines how the object is placed. Uh, I've show, I'm showing you this with these arrows. This is the arrow just how it naturally comes out when you place it on the floor and this is these are the arrows turned one quarter each and I've actually reversed the order because when you uh, right click an item it turns counterclockwise but when I mouse this item over, and this item is set to surface, when I mouse these items over these other surfaces, watch, it does a quarter turn clockwise, and it does another quarter turn clockwise, and another quarter turn clockwise, because these surfaces are set in that direction. That comes in really handy if you are manipulating NPCs, but it's just something to keep in mind. But if you you are manipulating NPCs, like I want an NPC to sit in this chair and um, sit facing forward instead of at an angle, because this chair is at an angle and the NPCs only face, you know, you can only click them into four different directions, north, east, south, and west. But if you put a surface, and it doesn't really matter what the surface is, but um, I'm just going to use a tile. And if you, and I'm going to raise it because a lot of times the female NPCs are much smaller and they, they sit lower. 
I'm going to put a female here. Um, so right now it's oriented the way it comes out on the floor. I'm going to put it back on the floor. It doesn't really matter as far as the attachment goes, but I'm going to turn this to 45 degrees and then I'm going to get an NPC. And one of the ones that sits. And now you see her on the floor and she faces those four directions, but when I put her on the surface, now she's facing straight ahead. And she can sit in that chair and she's exactly the way I want her. So that's a little tip on placing NPCs. Uh, you can use surfaces to make them be where you want them to be instead of where the floor dictates they will be. Because you can't really grab an NPC and raise it after you've um, pl placed it. So you need to be able to place them before you finalize before you do that click and, pl and place the object. Because once you place them, you can't grab them again for the most part. Okay, so some people say, well, why are my objects jumping all around? Well, like I said, when you move an object, you really sh want to have it on the floor position because then it won't move all over the place. But when you have an object that's oriented to the floor, it's going to want to be on a floor. And it determines that by where it, your mouse cursor grabs the item in a certain location. Some things it's on the corner, some things it's in the middle. Um, and where your mouse is determines whether that item is on the floor or not. Right now it's on the floor, but as I pass the threshold, it jumps. It's looking for a floor because I don't have a floor past the wall. There's no floor past the wall. So um, you can move items that are attached to the floor over an area that does not have a floor. And let, let me just show you um, both how and, and uh, getting a camera angle on this particular thing. Because I could never place that where I want to place it the way things were going because it was just jumping all over the place. So here's what I do. I back out so I can see behind the wall. I'm going to hold control and I'm back to that same brick same block, and you can see an image, an after image of where the item was, and I can use that to guide if I want to move it, say, a little bit ahead, or a little bit you know, this way, and you see it get darker and brighter. I'm cross crossing the threshold of where the item was. This is in front of where it was, and this is a little bit behind where it was, or right at where it was, so if I get right up to that line, then I can you know, be pretty sure I'm really close to where I was. Um, so out here, you see the red line of the floor sticking out from these banners. And you can't place an item past this barrier, uh, past that wall, unless it's anchored to the floor in some way. Now you see I have something sticking out of the base, but all of these have enough of them on the floor to still count as being in the base, not outside the base. So it won't let you place items outside the base, but it'll let you push items to almost outside of the base as long as part of it is in the base. And the larger the item, of course, the more of it that can stick out. Now some items you have to position, you have to kind of think to position them. Now these items are banners and they usually hang on walls. And these, I just turned them around so that you didn't see the icon to make them for the wall. But when I got to here, this stall panel is also hung on the wall. And if this panel behind it was hung on the wall, it would hang, it would block the stall panel. So what I had to do for this was position it on the floor and then get out here. And uh, usually you have to look down so that your mouse cursor is not past the floor and move it back a little bit. And if you can see, this one is a little bit in front of this one. That's why there is a difference there in what you're seeing, because they're, they're the same height, but one's in front of the other. So you have to watch your camera angle when you're placing items, and you have to be aware of your floor, and that your items are always going to look for a floor. And sometimes, even when you're on a floor, your items can jump around. I'm just going to use this lamp as an example, and, and these are shower floors and they count as floors. And when I move it over here and suddenly my mouse crosses to the base floor and the item jumps because my camera angle relative to the position of the floor changed. So sometimes you'll see things just kind of jump around 
because you're going from one floor surface in one at one level to another floor surface at another level and then if you're out like above the base and you're moving something around you can move it if you're holding control you can move an item that's oriented to a floor anywhere but um, to place that item with a floor orientation to get that item to even show up you have to mouse over something the base considers to be a floor first of course you can place it using the surface you know orientation but then if you're going to move it and position it you're still going to need to change it to floor or else you're going to have the problems I showed you earlier and um, you're going to need to mouse over the floor to get that item to register before you can place it so when you're building make sure you have something that is registered to the editor as a floor um, I like to use the office floor it's white it's easy to keep track of um, there are some objects like desks that count as floors and you know things like the bathroom floor here and then there are other surfaces that you would think oh that should be a floor and it's not like a brick floor doesn't register as a floor uh, rug doesn't register as a floor these bricks don't register as floors even though you can use them as floors so make sure that the item that you are um, using is actually a floor according to the base editor okay that pretty much does it for now I hope that this was helpful for you this is Daisy. Thanks for listening.